there's at least 40 plus different like units in the CSS specification. And initially I was going to go over literally each one of them until I realized how silly of an idea that was. The truth is many of these units should either not be used at all or are rarely used for web design. For example, in CSS, there are two types of length units, absolute and relative. The absolute CSS length unit is a unit of length that provides a precise and fixed size for the element they're applied to. These units include centimeters, millimeters, quarter millimeters, inches, picas, points, and pixels. But out of all of them, only the pixel unit should be used in web design and web development. On the other hand, a relative CSS length unit is a unit of length that is relative to either a font size or relative to the size of the viewport. These units include the following. But in most cases, you're only ever going to need 10 of them. And out of these 10 units, only 4 of them are actually units you absolutely need to know. This is not to say that the other units are useless, because they're not. But they're not frequently used in practice and can be learned in a need-to-know basis. You might think that the pixel unit is the easiest to understand, but actually it's the most complicated unit of all. You see, there's a lot of confusion about the pixel unit. Some people think it's a measurement that never changes. Some people think it's a distance measurement. Some people think it's a relative unit, despite being defined as an absolute unit. Some people think it's somewhere in the middle and refer to it as a hybrid of both absolute and relative. Some people think it's a non-linear angular measurement, or in other words, uses mathematics under the hood. And some people think it's relative to the pixel density of the device, while others think it's relative to the expected viewing distance of the device. Well, which one is it? The truth is, if you read one article, it'll tell you one thing and present the information as being objectively true. Then you'll read another article that contradicts the previous article while simultaneously presenting the information as being objectively true. However, here's some non-subjective, objective facts about the CSS pixel unit. On my 27-inch 1080p monitor, I have a box with a width of 96 pixels and a height of 96 pixels. If I take a ruler and measure the width of my box, I should get 2.54 centimeters because 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. But as you can see, on my screen, it's actually almost 3 centimeters. Then on my phone, which surprisingly has a 1440p resolution, the size is 1.4 centimeters. On my 27-inch 1440p monitor, the size is 2.2 centimeters. And finally, for the cherry on top of the cake, we have my television with a size of... Well, I don't even know what the size of my television is. Something about 50 inches, I think. But anyways, the size of the box is 5.5 centimeters. So we've got a bunch of different sizes for the same box. Well, why? Why is one CSS inch not actually one inch when I measure it? And why am I getting different sizes for the same box on different devices? Well, first of all, it's important to understand that these CSS absolute units aren't necessarily the same as their real-world counterparts. For example, 1 inch in the real world equals 2.54 real-world centimeters. However, in CSS, although 1 CSS inch equals 2.54 CSS centimeters, the output for these units are totally dependent on something called the anchor unit. If the output is for print, or a similar resolution to print, then a physical unit is the anchor unit. In other words, CSS will output measurements equal to those of the real world. So one CSS inch, but for print, would be the same as one inch as measured with a ruler across your printed paper. But if the output is for screen media, including high resolution devices, low resolution devices, and devices with unusual viewing distances, pixel is the anchor unit. In this case, where pixel is the anchor unit, its measurement will be dependent on something called the reference pixel. Unfortunately, the official explanation of the reference pixel on the W3C CSS specification is what leads to literally all of the confusion related to the pixel unit. The official explanation is as follows, and I quote, The reference pixel is the visual angle of one pixel on a device with a device pixel density of 96 dpi and a distance from the reader of an arm's length. For a nominal arm's length of 28 inches, the visual angle is therefore about 0 0.0213 degrees. For reading at arm's length, one pixel disc corresponds to about 0 0.26 millimeters or 196 of an inch. This explanation is what led a lot of people to believe that the pixel unit is a non-linear angular measurement, but we can see that this is not the case with the following paragraph, and I quote, the image below illustrates the effect of viewing distance on the size of a reference pixel. 
A reading distance of 71 centimeters or 28 inches results in a reference pixel of 0.26 millimeters, while a reading distance of 3.5 meters or 12 feet results in a reference pixel of 1.3 mil millimeters. Notice how the reference pixel is referred to in millimeters rather than radians, degrees, or grads, and how the reference pixel changes with viewing distance, whereas the angle would be constant. The reference pixel, in more simpler terms, is a pixel that looks exactly the same in all viewing situations relative to the expected viewing distance of a device. This is why I had different measurements across the different devices I measured, because they all had different expected viewing distances. The expected viewing distance for my television substantially surpasses the expected viewing distance on my monitor, and although the box had a different physical measurement, the box actually looked exactly the same relative to the size difference of both the TV and the monitor. This standard is beautiful because it creates consistency across all devices regardless of their size and pixels per inches. So in summary, the pixel unit is a measurement of length that is relative to the expected viewing distance of the device being used. And if none of this made any sense, that's okay. Like I said, it's one of the most complicated unit of all. But the beautiful thing about it is you don't need to understand it to use it. One pixel will always be the smallest width to make a line visible on the specific device, and that's really all you need to know to use it. Now that we understand how the pixel unit works, we can finally move on to the M and RAM unit. But first, we need to understand what problem they actually solve in the real world. In my HTML, all I have is a container with an unordered list of four list items. Then in my CSS, I can select the unordered list and give it the font size property. When I set the font size to 16 pixels, we see nothing is happening. And if I comment it out, we see we still have the same font size. The reason this is happening is because 16 pixels is the default font size of all of the popular browsers, including Chrome, which happens to be the one that I'm using. We can actually see that this is the case when I open my settings on my browser, go on the Appearance tab and find the Customize Fonts button. We see that the default font size is set to 16 pixels and as it happens, 3% of users change this value for accessibility reasons and when it comes to the internet, 3% is probably a few million people. The reason I'm showing you this is look at my unordered list changing sizes as I change the default font size on my browser. You can see it grows and shrinks as I change the default font size on my browser. However, back in my CSS file, if I were to explicitly set the font size on my unordered list to 16 pixels and try changing the default font size of the browser, we see it's not working. This is one of the pitfalls of using the pixel unit anywhere and on any property. Some people make the mistake of adding a pixel font size to the HTML element to overwrite the default, not knowing that they're actually screwing with the accessibility preferences of potentially 3% of their user base. Setting a pixel font size on the HTML makes your entire website ignore the preferences of people that took the time to modify the setting. Big disrespect, don't do this. But this is where the relative units come into the mix. Unlike the pixel unit, which is an absolute unit, the M and REM units are categorized as being relative units that are relative to a font size. In the case of the M unit, it is relative to the font size of the element it is assigned to, unless it is assigned to the font size property, in which case it'll be relative to the font size of the parent. So for example, when I set the font size on the unordered list to 1M, we see nothing happened, and this is because over on the H HTML, the 1M that is assigned to the font size of the unordered list is asking the parent container for its font size. Well, I didn't set a font size on the container, so it asks the next parent. But again, I didn't set a font size on the body and after the body, there is no other parent to ask. So it defaults to being relative to the font size of the root element, which is 16 pixels by default. However, if I select the container and give it a font size of 32 pixels, for example, now 1M on the UL element is relative to the font size of the container because the container is the closest parent with a font size defined. We see the font size on our list items are now way bigger, but earlier I said using pixel values is problematic for accessibility reasons. So what I can do is replace the 32 pixels with 2M and we see we get the same result. The reason we get the same result is because on the container, the M unit is asking the parent of the container for its font size. The body doesn't have a font size and because there is no other parent after the body, it defaults to being relative to the root element, which has a font size of 16 pixels by default. Also, we set the M unit to two, which means it's 16 pixels times two, which is 32 pixels, the same value we had before. When I try to change the default font size in my browser settings, we see our list items are growing and shrinking just as expected. 
But although the M unit fixed the issue we had with accessibility, it introduced another problem in our code. Imagine I give the body a font size of 1.5M. We see our items increased in size. Now imagine I also add a font size of 2M on the list elements. We see our items grew in size again. The issue isn't with the size of our items, but with the fact that we've got four font sizes that are depending on each other. And this makes it super difficult to keep track of the actual size of each element. So for example, what does 2M represent in our list element? Well, we have to look at the parent, but the parent also uses the M unit. So we have to check the parent of the parent. Well, the parent of the parent also uses the M unit. So we have to ask the parent of the parent of the parent. And you get my point. This is crazy and you shouldn't be doing this. Instead, what we can do is replace everything that has the M unit with the REM unit. And now we see our items all have a more reasonable size. The way the REM unit works is instead of being relative to the font size of the parent, it is being relative to the font size of the root element. The root element is the HTML element and the HTML element has a default of 16 pixels. Using the rem unit solved the cascading problem that we had with the m unit, where each font size was dependent on a chain of parents. And as a general rule, whenever I set a value on a font size, I always use rems. I never use the m unit for font sizes, but that doesn't mean that I never use it. On the HTML, I'm going to remove the unordered list and replace it with a button and give it the class of button. Then on my CSS, I'll remove everything and select the button by its class name. I'll give it a background color of red, a color of white, and I'll give it a font size of 1.5 rem. Our button needs some padding. Earlier I said that the M unit is relative to the font size of the element it is assigned to, unless it is assigned to the font size property, in which case it'll be relative to the font size of the parent. This means that when I use the M unit on the font size property, it becomes relative to the parent element. However, if I give a padding to my button of 1M, because 1M isn't on a font size, it is then relative to the font size of its own element. This is where the M unit really shines. It's an amazing unit to use on paddings, margins, and widths because when it isn't assigned to the font size property, it becomes relative to the font size of its own element. And we can see that this is the case when I change the font size on my button. We see the padding is always being relative to the font size of the button itself. This means we don't really need to worry about the padding ever again when we change the font size on our button. In this chapter, we're going to be looking at percentages and the two main viewport units. In my HTML, all I have is a header with the class of header, a div with the class of section container, and nested inside the div is an h1 heading with the class of header title. We're going to be creating a header, so in my CSS, I'll select the header by its class name and give it a background color of light blue, a color of white, and a padding of 1M for the top and bottom, and 0 for the left and right. I'll also select the h1 by its class name and give it a font size of 2.5 rem and a margin of 0. Then I'll select the container by its class name and give it the border of 3 pixel solid red just so we can see it and a width of 80%. You see our border shrunk in size. If I comment out the width for one second, we see the border covers the entire width and this is because percentages are relative to their parent. The parent of the section container is the header, and the header is a block level element, so it covers 100% of the width of the page. When I uncomment the width on our section container, 80% is relative to the width of the parent header, and we can actually test this by adding a width of 50% on the header. Now the header is half in size, and we see the section container's width of 80% is 80% relative to the width of the parent header. Percentages are always relative to their parent. However, if you don't want the width to be relative to the parent, you can use the VW unit. For example, if I replace 80% with 80VW, we see our border now covers 80% of the viewport. And this is because the VW unit is a viewport unit and is relative to the viewport width. There's also the VH unit. It's the same as VW, but it's relative to the viewport height instead. I'll comment out the width on our section container and add a height of 100 VH on the header. We see this covers the entire viewport height. And if I set it to 50 VH, it'll cover half of the viewport height. Use percentages when you want to size relative to the parent and use viewport units when you want to size relative to the viewport. The last unit I want to talk about is the CH unit. This unit is pretty simple. All it does is measures the width of the character zero on your font. The reason this is useful is because we can use it to set a max width on a paragraph. And the reason you would want to do that is because on this example, we see my text is super long, is ugly to look at, and is hard to read. 
To fix it, I can select it in the CSS and give it a max width of 60 CH. We see this looks a lot better, and the reason this works so well over using M's or REMs for setting a max width is because in web design, as a rule of thumb, your paragraph should have a length per line of around 45 to 75 characters, and using the CH unit makes defining a specific max character length super easy. And there you have it. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of the units we talked about. And for all the other units, they are super rare and can be learned in a need-to-know basis. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.